It was a lovely summer's evening, and the engines of Sodor were helping Sam get ready to film a brand new double heading video. The engines were having a wonderful time. They loved getting the chance to work together, and they also loved being allowed to appear in Sam's videos. But one engine that wasn't very happy was James. Sam had said that the only safe way for two engines to double head was to keep the slowest engine at the back, and that was always James. Oh, I just hate being at the back. Nobody can see me properly, I'm getting covered in ash, and all I can see is Edward's big fat bottom. Oi, I heard that James. I don't care. But before James could get really cross, the rehearsal was finished for the night, and Sam went downstairs to bed. That night, James paid a visit to the other engines at the turntable. He wanted to tell them a thing or two. I'm not being at the back anymore. I need to be at the front, not Edward, and then everyone will see my lovely paintwork. Don't be ridiculous, James, said Gordon. Edward is the faster and stronger engine by far, and he's much more experienced than you are. I was just about to say the same. Yes, thank you, Edward. I'm dealing with this. Look, it's only safe for Edward to lead the train, not you, James. I'm sorry, but safety must come first. Well, it's not dignified having to look at his nasty bottom. Well, excuse me. I've had a long... Blast time. you, Edward! How dare you continue to interrupt me! <sighs> if you're going to doublehead, James, you must stay behind Edward, and that's final. Fine, said James crossly as he puffed away. And I swear I'll never doublehead ever again. Oh dear. Now James was in quite a bad mood. I'm not slow, I'm not weak, and I don't need the help of any other engines. If I can't be the front engine, then I'll be the only engine, and I'll pull the train all by myself. Then I'll be the star of the video. James spent the rest of the night in the shed on his own, but he wasn't cross anymore. He had a cunning plan. Early the next morning, James got to work. He shunted together the biggest rake of coaches he had ever seen. Come on, coaches, wake up! This would show the other engines how experienced he was. Showing off, he flew past the turntable at full speed. I'm proving you wrong, Gordon! Oh, no, goodness me, sighed Gordon. Oh, I hope he knows what he's doing. But James didn't know what he was doing. He was running far too fast, and he was starting to lose his balance around the curves. James tried to slow down, but the momentum of all the coaches kept pushing him forward with unstoppable force. He bombed down Gordon's Hill at an unbelievable speed, and when he hit the curve at the bottom, he flew clean off the tracks. Oh, steaming smoke boxes. Oh, my head. When James woke up, Sam was carrying him to the workbench to see whether James had broken anything. Right then, James, let's just have a quick look. Hopefully you haven't done any serious damage. Sam began to take James's mechanism apart. Oh, blimey, watch me, Ash Pen. I'm sorry, James, but you've ruined your motor. I will order you a new one, but it's going to be about a week before you can run again on your own. Sam went back down the ladder to order James's new parts. A week? Oh, I don't think so. <sighs> James tried to move, but it was almost impossible. Then, Emily puffed into view to find out what was the matter. James? What are you doing? You know you won't work until you've got your new motor. I'm an independent engine. I'm a perfect engine, and I don't need a new motor. James puffed unhealthily. James tried and tried to get going again, but in the end, he had to give up. Oof. 
I'm sorry, James, but without your new motor, you just won't be able to run on your own, said Emily softly, trying to get James to understand. But this gave James an idea. What if he didn't have to run on his own? What if he ran with another engine? What if he could persuade another engine to run with him in a double header? Hello, Gordon, said James timidly. I, I was wondering whether me and you could double head together tomorrow. Gordon couldn't be cross with James while he wasn't very well. Of course, James, said Gordon generously. I'd be honoured to help you. Thank you, Gordon. So, you don't mind being at the back, do you? At the back? Boomed Gordon, his good mood completely forgotten. You must be joking. I belong at the front of any train I associate with. And besides, you swore you'd never double head ever again. Can't you remember? I, I can remember, Gordon, but... Well then, stick to your guns! James was going to argue, but Gordon was so forceful that James decided to try another engine instead. I'm sorry, James, but uh, me and Spencer are doing this one together, said Henry. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh. Now James had only one option left. Edward. James puffed painfully towards the siding where Edward was waiting. <laughs> my, my, Edward. Uh, may I say how splendid you're looking this evening? Edward was still upset because of what James had said about his bottom. What do you want, James? He asked irritably. Well, I was wondering if maybe you and I could still double head together for the video? Yes, all right, James. But I'll have to be at the front. James's face fell. Oh, why, Edward? Because even if you had a working motor, it wouldn't be safe. But since yours is dodgy, we'd be sure to have a most terrible accident, explained Edward. James wanted to argue, but Edward was his only chance to still be in Sam's video. He realised he needed Edward's help more than he needed to be at the front of the train. OK, Edward, let's do it. Oh, good man! With Edward's help, James put on a fantastic display for the video, and his dodgy motor didn't slow him down at all. He even enjoyed having Edward's help, even if he did have to spend the entire day looking at his bottom.